What's up, everybody? Thank you guys for joining us on Robert Garcia Unfiltered. We had a few fight cards that from this past Saturday that we wanted to get into. Um, we had the cancellation of the Virgil Ortiz fight that was scheduled for March 19th at the Galen Center. And then Alexis Rocha versus Blair Cobb steps in and takes over as the main event. Uh, we'll get into that and into details on the Virgil Ortiz um, illness. We'll talk about Edgar Berlanga main eventing at the MSG uh, Hulu Theater. Um, the undercard is Andrew Sayas, a few other, a few other um, top ranks, uh, top prospects that, that look really good on Saturday. We had a card in Dubai, um, a Probellum card, which featured Sonny Edwards, Regis Progray, a few other fighters. We'll get, we'll get into a few of those fights. Um, the, the schedule release from Showtime with, uh, I think, like 10 dates, around 10 dates to start. Uh, March 26th, all the way to sometime in June, uh, pay-per-view fights, wor numerous world title fights. Um, some, you know, okay, some better than others. Really, really good cards um, all around. But we're going to start with this Saturday's card right here from the Galen Center um, at the USC at the USC campus. Um, again, Virgil Ortiz was supposed to be main eventing against Michael McKinson. Virgil pulled out due to an illness, which we'll talk about after we talk about the actual fights themselves. But the co-main event was scheduled to be a really, really good co-main event with Alexis Rocha fighting uh, Blair, the Flair, uh, Cobbs. Um, you know, kind of, you could say cocky, uh, big personality type of, type of fighter. Alexis Rocha, more calm, um, quiet, does most of his talking in the ring. Um, and yeah, we'll start, with, uh, we'll start with a little bit of the undercard. We had a, um, a few guys that we know. Evan Sanchez picked up a, picked up a decision win. Um, fights at a welterweight from where's it? Uh, from Central Valley, California. Central Valley, California. I don't know exactly where. I wanted to give a shout out to where he is from, but uh, can't think about it off the top of my head. Uh, Beck the Bully came back and had a good uh, TK, uh, TKO with, uh, with the body shot. Had Alex Rincon. A few other guys, you know, with big wins. They found a late replacement opponent for Michael McKinson. Um, they were able to, they said that they offer him over 30, over 30, over 10 opponents. He said yes to all of them. And later replacement, Alex Martin, who fights at 140 pounds, uh, had a record of 17 and three, never been stopped, goes in and um, takes, uh, replaces uh, Virgil Ortiz, but he loses in a decision. Uh, what did you think about that fight? And Michael uh, Washington in general, like, what do you think about him? Maybe moving forward, maybe. You know, they do do the rematch with Virgil, or what do you think the possibilities are? Well, well there's no rematch. They, they never fight. Probably but, not, uh, yeah, my bad. My but now, honestly, it, it's actually it's actually good that 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 uh, that they didn't even fight. Let's be real. That guy's not even close to the level or in any way that could be that could be matched up against Virgil. I honestly, I think I think it was a good thing that the fight didn't happen. Because uh, now, now Virgil, you know, I don't think Virgil's gonna say, "Oh, I still won that fight." Because it's not gonna look too good. I got, you know, fight. let's be real, man. We were watching it, you know, with my dad, and my dad, my dad was saying, "Fuck, you know, hacen más fintas que que golpes que están tirando." You know, it was just, yeah. There's no. I mean, he faints more than he actually lands. Exactly, <laughs> he fucking faints more than he fucking throws punch. You know, he's not in that level. Let's let's be real. You know. Virgil knocks him out two or three rounds if he wants. If he puts the pressure right away, he'll stop him the first round if, if yeah, and if if he wants, you know. Uh, I think uh, Virgil is Virgil's on a different level and he's uh, much better, you know. But you know, the fight was just one of those fights. You know, they found a re late replacement, similar style, so both were fighting the same way. They both were feigning, and you know, it was just uh, the fight just sucked. You know, good thing we had a good main event. Yeah, um, for McKinson, like you said, not the most exciting fight, nothing really to talk about, nothing really, like, good that came out of it for him because he had one of those just boring performances, nothing nothing too crazy. Um, but you got to give him credit for at least taking the fight. Um, he had a – he was a, he had a long training camp, I'm sure. He was, he was scheduled – he was thinking he was going to fight, you know, uh, Virgil Ortiz in a big fight, so I'm sure he was in the best shape he could have been and this and that. But again, just no, not, well, on, not for, on the level. For that, actually, for that, we have to we have to know that you know he was he had a full training camp, you know, and a few days before the fight, the fight gets gets canceled a week or so before the fight. So yes, you know, obviously you got you got to give him credit. You know, he went in there. 
uh, you know, preparing for somebody, but then they bring somebody else and, you know, but still, you know, I, I think, you know, when something like that happens and you already, you know, you know, there might be a chance of you still fighting him again, you got to go out and perform. You got to go out and look good and, and look impressive and let the people think, wow, maybe this guy would have gave Virgil problems or maybe this guy would have, you know, would have upset, you know what I mean? You have to yeah. have one of those performances, you know, because his performance, you know, very few in the United States knew who he was. No, none of us knew who he was, had never seen him fight. And then we get to see what he did. So we're all, at least myself, I'm thinking it, it would be even embarrassing for Virgil to, to fight him because, you know, it just didn't look good. It, it's not going to look good if, 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 uh, if Golden Boy promotion, Rick Marigan, they come back saying, oh, we want to fight the same guy. It's not going to look good. Yeah. Um, again, Michael McKinson originally scheduled to fight Virgil Ortiz is the main event. The co-main event moves up to main event. I you you had told you had actually told me that they were maybe exploring the possibility of moving it moving up one of the co-main event fighters. I think that's uh, about moving maybe a Rochow or Blair Cops to fight McKinson if they could yes. find him an opponent. But then that would have left the other one kind of exactly. Up. And honestly, it was better that they left it this way and bumped these guys up to the to the main event because there was a lot of trash talk, a lot of there was a lot of hype around, around this fight, especially here locally. Um, Blair the Flair is it trains at the Wild Card Gym. Um, Alexis Rocha is uh, is, is from uh, TKO right here in, in Santana. So you know it was kind of a local Southern California uh, type of rivalry fight, which um, I'm glad they kept because you have the, the the trash talker, the brash, arrogant guy in, in Blair the Flair Cobb who's going to sell the fight, but Rocha, who is the quiet uh, the quiet killer, goes in there, does his work in the ring. Who was able to get the TKO stoppage? Um, what did you uh, What did you think of, of of Rocha's performance and Blair the Flair now? Because going into it, he was talking a lot of smack about not just about even Rocha, just about a lot of fighters. He was calling out Jerron Ennis, talking about about Errol Spence and Terence Crawford that none of them fight each other when he's actually like a 32, 33 year old prospect still. Um, and those guys are obviously Errol. I think is like 31, 32 years old, and he's a you know two. Uh, yeah, but but two, Blair, you know what Blair does is. All the talking he does, it got it, it got him to this fight, you know, to a big fight. And if he would have won, it would have given him a bigger fight. So that's his job, you know. Uh, you know, he 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 looks, he seems kind of like like if he was one of those uh, WWE, WWE, you know, WWE uh, wrestlers, you know, it just makes you know a lot of noise and and is loud and and cocky and all that. So so you know, people seem you know want to see him get beat. And he's the type of guy, and 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 uh, you know, in LA, you know, people actually wanted to see him beat. You know, they they uh, the people showed up because they wanted to they wanted Rocha, somebody quiet, somebody somebody that doesn't say much, to go out and put a beating on this guy, and and that's what Rocha did. You know, you know, there was a few rounds where were a little you know difficult for Rocha too, because Blair was was uh, was 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 boxing pretty good too. But uh, you know, I like I like I like it when um, when Hector. Tells him in the yeah. corner, and and that happened in a previous fight too. Like I don't remember, I think he t I don't know which fight it was, but he tells him you're gonna hate yourself tomorrow. That was against Rashidi Ellis. Yeah, okay, and and that when you, and, watch, and, when, you uh, watch, when you when you watch this fight again tomorrow, you're gonna fucking hate yourself because you're giving yes, it away. Yes, exactly. Like and 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 this fight again, he he told him you're behind, even though he, he wasn't behind. But there was those rounds where you never know, you know, and. Yeah. With the judges, you never know. So he told him, "You're you're behind. You better, you know, you know." He he motivated him to to go out and, and do what he, he did. Him. He dropped him. I think I think um I think that that's that's great. You know, we gotta also mention you know the trainers because a lot of times you know the fighters the fighters win fights because of the trainers. You know, trainers make a change, make a difference in the corner. And uh, in this case, I think uh, it's not that he was gonna lose. He was not gonna lose the fight. I think he was on his way to winning, but I think that pushed him a little bit more, and uh, that's good, you know, they have a good team, you know, they come training in our gym and spar all the time, so we were very happy for them, because, uh, you know, that put uh, Rocha in, in, in a bigger fight, in a, in, in, a, uh, in a fight where, where uh, you know, I'm not saying he didn't make, he, he did really good money in this fight, but just much better for his next fight, that's just, that's what it is, you know, you know, boxing is, is, is one of those sports where you want, you win this one, you got to get the bigger one and next and next. And if you continue winning, then you're getting paid well. So good for them. Um, again, both guys, both fights, the main event and the co-main event, I think the good thing about them being well, about the way they matched up is that both of them were in the same division. So maybe a potential fight, maybe you just said that you don't think 
but Kinson would would have done you know wouldn't have done too much against Virgil or if they do reschedule the fight he won't really he doesn't have a chance to be he's not going to beat Virgil Ortiz um Alexis Rocha coming off of he had coming off of the the loss to Rashidi Ellis he had two straight uh now he has three straight um uh, TKO KO wins do you think him he hasn't read he's not at the at the level yet of a Virgil Ortiz he hasn't fought the former world champs the 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 um the mean machines, the the Maurice hookers, the way Virgil has. Do you think now? Do you think now they would rather set up maybe a Virgil? I mean, uh, Alexis Rocha versus Michael McKinson, and 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 how do you think that fight plays out? Well, I, I think I think the what they're gonna do maybe that this is my opinion is they're probably gonna offer Rocha the fight against Virgil next when Virgil comes back. Uh, that, that's my opinion. You know, I could be wrong. Uh, like, like I told you, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think uh, there's other guys, well, I don't even know his name, McKinson or whatever. Yeah. Comes on the way. Michael McKinson. Yeah, I said, okay. Uh, his performance was just wasn't spectacular. It wasn't one of those performances where you want to see him again, where, yeah, he, yeah, him and Roach is going to be a badass fight. I don't know that won't be a badass fight. So, so I think, uh, you know, you know, with 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 Matchroom, the zone, and, and Golden Boy doing it together, well, they will give the guy another opportunity, and and I and I don't want to just say yeah, they owe they they we feel like they, his, they owe him. He didn't look too good, but maybe 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 he's, he's better than what he, than what we've seen. I never seen him before. What I've seen last Saturday shouldn't even be mentioned against against uh, Virgil, but maybe against Rocha, maybe it'll be a better fight. Maybe maybe, maybe against Conor Ben, huh? Maybe against Conor Ben, also with Matchroom. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of um, in, in 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 the UK because they're both from over there, so that would probably make more sense. You know, that guy here, we've never seen him before, and he was just not. The first time that we saw him, it's nothing. He to, just didn't to, perform. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think Rocha. I think Rocha is gonna meet my personal opinion, and, I, and not because I know it. I, I'm just thinking they're probably gonna they're probably gonna have, offer Rocha the the Virgil Ortiz fight when Virgil comes back. Yeah, I do a fight here in Southern California. That would be. And I, and you know, it's a fight that. I I wouldn't want to see I like you know Ro- Rocha trains in our in our gym you know for sparring and great kid great great people and, and we all know we know Virgil Virgil's a great kid too so it's too it it would be a great fight but it's one that I wouldn't want to see I know obviously business and they're gonna Rocha might want the fight because he knows it'll be huge a big win would we'll fucking put him in another level. Uh, I think it's a decent. I think I think Roche is a great great name for Virgil also with with his last performance that that Rocha had. I think it put, it puts him in a position where he could fight. You know, people. You know, we rather see Rocha against Virgil than McKinson against Virgil. Yeah, from the from the performances. Again, all this all this first first we need to um, see how long Virgil's going to take uh, take off. Uh, I heard that he has to. He has to go around like three, four weeks with no, with no uh, physical activity, like no, no training, no, not, nothing, nothing, um, like none of he can't, he can't train for for that long. So then, once he does get back into camp, he's gonna have to do, I'm sure, a few weeks of training to see how well he gets back. So I don't, we don't know when, you know, Virgil again. Rocha was in. It was one of those fights where he got cut. He did get hit a few times. He came out, you know, bruised up. So he is gonna have to take some time out. So I think the schedules will. will yeah, the schedule will be good. Them. Yeah, the schedule will be good. Again, Virgil Ortiz had to pull out. We heard originally when we heard the news, it, it didn't come out that he was sick. It just came out that Virgil had pulled out. Um, I remember there was a few reporters that 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 called me and asked me uh, that told me that they heard that it was because of Virgil's weight. Um, that they said, oh, Virgil's gonna, Virgil's, uh, Virgil was gonna be heavy. He was gonna make weight. He got sick, cutting weight, and um, but that wasn't the case. Um, I can't pronounce the the illness that came out. It's rhabdomyolis. I don't know exactly what it is. If you go look at Mike Coppinger's tweets on Twitter, Instagram, um, he posted some stuff about it. You'll see the the exact thing. But it it is a breakdown of muscle tissue that releases a damaging pro a damaging protein into the blood. The muscle tissue breaks uh breakdown results in the release of a protein. Uh, myo myoglobin and in into the blood myoglobin can damage the kidneys so it's a serious illness that he that he got it is very rare um and yeah and it's something that's critical it needs emerg- emergency care um as soon as possible again i i there was a few people that that i talked to that told me um that it was something it was something that virgil started 
you know, like a week ahead of time where he's, he didn't. And from, from the quotes also from Virgil that he went like a week or two where he was already feeling really, really weak. He wasn't feeling like himself when, when we get guys and you could, you could talk about this when we get guys a few weeks before a fight, when they're maybe already starting to get a little bit tired, you let them, you tell them, um, I know, I remember you've told, you've told Frank this before, who used to cook for Mikey, give him more to eat or, 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 you know, make sure he's eating correctly, make sure that like, so if, if it was something with Virgil's weight, where, where, where he was maybe like a, a, a two weeks ahead of the fight where he's already like, maybe his, maybe uh, Virgil, Manny Robles, Hector started feeling that maybe he was, you know, maybe he was a little getting a little weak. They start giving a, l- a little bit more food and that's where people got the, oh, he's heavy. He's going to, he's not going to make weight and this and that, but we know Virgil, he's been, he's, he, how many fights did we do with him at well? Yeah, that's the thing, you know, when, when they started saying that it was the weight that he looked heavy, Virgil's always a little heavy, you know, and he makes weight, you know, Virgil goes out and makes weight. He, he, uh, he, he makes it happen. So, you know, when, when they were, you know, when we started reading that, that he was too heavy, that he looked, you know, like 20 pounds overweight, Virgil might be 15, 20 pounds, you know, two weeks before the fight, but he's going to cut it. We know that Virgil will, he's always done it. He, he, he trains hard and, 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 and pushes himself to make weight. So I knew the weight problem was, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, so I don't really know what that, what that, um, you know, that, 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 that mm-hmm. illness that he got is, you know, I really don't know. And the person that could probably explain to, explain it to us more, more, more is, is, is Charles, but he's out in vacation. So we haven't even got a chance to talk to Charles about it. So, you know, only from what we've read, what we've seen, you know, on, 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 on social media and stuff like that. But, uh, we really don't know exactly what happened, you know, the reasons and all that. Uh, I can't wait for Charles to get back and, you know, he could explain that a little bit better because I don't want to say something that that might be wrong or, or, or that might not even be the correct thing, you know, to say uh, due to that illness. Uh, you know, I just hope, you know, he gets, you know, he gets well and uh, he comes back. You know, we know he, he works hard, he trains hard and, uh, and, and, uh, we want to see him become a world champion. He's a great kid, you know. I think he 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 deserves fighting for the title and, and winning a title. But you know, hopefully it's not that serious. And hopefully, hopefully that you know, if, if it is a problem, hopefully they make those corrections, they make those changes. They may, you know, you know, it's gonna be something, something, it's a decision that uh that they have to go and 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 think about it with the whole team, promoter, manager and and the team you know the dad and everybody else they have to make a decision and uh and uh make some changes if, if you know if it was a serious um illness and 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 they have to make changes they're gonna have to whatever it is they're gonna have to yeah again the the, the stuff with the weight um every time we, we every time virgil was in was in camp oh, oh a few weeks before the fight he's let's say two weeks before he's anywhere from 15 up to 18 pounds 20 pounds but once it comes to the week before the fight, once he's done sparring, sparring is completely finished. He is, let's say, he goes into fight week, he's 10 to 12 pounds over. But he makes the weight. That seems like a lot to the people. But the way that most of these guys could weight now anyways, uh, you ask Josito Lopez, who Josito is the guy that all the, all the fighters ask because he's been through, you know, he's, he's the veteran of the team. He's been through, you know, different, different training styles, different ways of cutting weight, different strength and conditioning coaches. He always, he says that he weight, he leaves the last, six pounds seven pounds for a few days before the weigh-in like the last day before the weigh-in he drops five six pounds because he says you can go the whole week of 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 fight week where you're cutting weight you're not even drinking that much water but you're gonna feel like shit for a whole week he said but if you cut weight the night before the weigh-in where you have six seven pounds that you're gonna feel like shit but just that night and the next morning you weigh in you drink your stuff you were only really dehydrated and you were only bad for 10 hours you know, the, the least amount of time possible that you're dehydrated, the better. So Virgil is, is sort of does that the way Josito does it, where they wait, they wait. And then the last, and Virgil's never, you know, like we've said, he's made weight for all of his fights. He's had those problems during the, during the pandemic where they had the wrong, they had the scales wrong. And, you know, the, the one scale. Yeah, but he's, not, he's not, he's not dedicated. That, that kid makes weight, yeah, whatever it is, yeah. he's going to make weight. We know that. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, you know, hopefully everything comes out all right. And maybe we do get Virgil Ortiz versus Alexis Rocha or, or in the meantime, if Virgil isn't able to come back, maybe Rocha, McKinson, Connor Brand, you know, we get a right. mix of, of those, those four guys. Cause, uh, you know, they're, they're all four, you know, young fighters that, you know, McKinson, not on the level of the other three, but he should get a shot because he was, 
you know, he was in line to fight someone like a, like right. Jorge Ortiz. Um, that same day, we had a card in earlier in the day. We had a card from uh, Dubai, um, Pro Bellum with Richard Schaefer. They've been signing a lot of fighters. Um, uh, I believe I read that uh, Lou DiBella is involved in Pro Bellum now. Um, I don't know if he's directly like, directly works for Pro Bellum or just has his own fighters because they now they co-promote, I think, a big percentage of his, of his stable. Um, but the card, nothing, nothing too, nothing stood out where you're like, oh shit, like, you know, uh, Sonny Edwards had a, had a decision win. He's a 112 pound IBF champ. Um, obviously that's somebody, that's something we keep an eye on because that's a, those are weight classes where maybe potentially we get fights with Bam and, and, you know, stuff like that. There was a lot of talks about him, maybe unifying with Julio Cesar Martinez. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the, the one uh, thing with, uh, with Sonny Edwards. He, you know, he's a world champion, in a good division right now. Uh, Regis Progre uh, stopped uh, Tyrone McKenna. Regis Progre hadn't really, hasn't really had since the tournament that he did where he lost to Josh Taylor. Hasn't really had a big win. Hasn't had a, a the the big opponents. Hasn't been able to get a big name to to step in the ring with them. But he won and he's and uh, looked looked impressive. But he says that now he will be he will, he's targeting a fight with Chon Cepeda for the WBC title. I think this one was. Was uh, but I but the same thing with Jose Ramirez. They're kind of eliminators. They told him that he's in line out for for one of those times. But again, Josh Taylor's supposed to move up and wait. So we're gonna get a big old you know um, round robin of guys at one forty pounds. Regis, Jose, Chon, Arnold Barbosa. Eight hey guys Jose. get an opportunity. Yeah, that's so there's gonna be a lot of guys getting opportunities at at the um, Subriel Matias. A lot of guys getting opportunities. Uh, Tank Davis, if he wants to fight at one forty, getting opportunities at titles. For titles at 140 pounds so regis just falls in line with those guys but again you know pro bellum yeah this was more like a stay busy fight for regis i didn't i didn't for see all the guys really, for all the guys none of the there wasn't there wasn't yeah. too many too many fights that were 50 50 competitive yeah no i, I didn't see the fight guys. i didn't see that card but uh but yeah you know if you know he's in position to to fight for a title so yeah john Cepeda also had a stay busy fight exactly. same you know yes i think same I same thing you know he had a stay busy fight this weekend just in Mexico, I don't even know how he did. Honestly, I don't even know how the fight went. But I, I, I read that he was gonna. He had a, he had a fight in Mexico. Then we had the card, uh, top rank, had a card um, at the Hulu Theater, Madison Square Garden, headlined by Edgar Berlanga. Keyshawn Davis was originally supposed to be, I believe, the co-main event. He was supposed to be the co-main event for that. He pulled out due to an illness, not COVID related. Um, Hopefully everything's okay with Keyshawn Davis. That's one of the best prospects right now in in boxing. But on the undercard, you had a lot of lot of a lot of guys that uh, I know. Shushu, you, what's his name? I like that. I guy. was about to say. I know you were impressed with Calvin. one of them specifically. Yeah. Uh, you had Calvin Davis with the with the first round knockout. That's the younger, the older. I think he's the older brother, but he's just has a. Or I don't know exactly, but uh, to Keyshawn Davis, his name is Kelvin Davis. He got a TKO in the first round. You had uh, John ba John Bowser in a tough fight. He won a United Miss decision win. United uh, decision. Henry LeBron had a TKO in the seventh round. Uh, also undefeated Puerto Rican John Bauza as well. You had uh, Jai Tucker, also unanimous decision. But the one that stood out before we get, obviously we get into Berlanga and Xander Sayas main event and coming event. The one guy on the undercard that stood out for you that right away you 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 texted me or or when I, the, as soon as I saw you you said holy shit did you see that kid? Uh, shoot, no, I never seen him before. I never heard of him before. And Bruce nice Carrington, he's a he's a hundred and thirty yes. pounder. Uh, yes. Pick up a KO in the fifth round. If you guys have not seen it, go on Top Rank's Instagram page and go look at the angle of how they have it from, you know how Top Rank does that cool, like iPhone, they're recording with the iPhone uh, ringside. Right. Go look at the knockout. Um, but after you after you see the, go look at the whole performance. That that guy is legit. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's good. good. By the way, he is now, uh, he is now three and oh, barely. Three and oh. Yeah. Uh, fighting six rounds, but um, you guys really got. Oh, to he, I think his next fight will be an A rounder for sure. He'll be fighting ten rounds and two or three more fights. I guarantee you, he's good. Just like yeah, Keyshawn Davis. Nice. Yeah, he's like Keyshawn Davis. Those guys nice. are legit. That's good. Then we get to the main event and co-main event. Um, hopefully it's the last time that they have Berlanga main and 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 Xander's co-main. Hopefully they switch it next time. Um, Xander Sayas. He, I mean, that kid is he for being so young, looks like a veteran in there, composed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he looks like he's he's the legit prospect coming out of Puerto Rico right now. Obviously, you have I think the best fighter right now in the in the mail because I see a lot of people right away on, on Twitter and Instagram complaining right away. Oh, Amanda Serrano is a world champion, this and that, but that's a woman. I'm talking about the men. Subriel Matias is a contender for the for the for, for a world title and a legit contender. He will probably be the he will probably be the next world champ. Um, 
from from the young guys in Puerto Rico right now. But right behind him, I think Xander Sayas is is the is the best prospect. What did you think of Xander Sayas? I think Xander Sayas is is, is 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 on his way to to being Puerto Rico's next big name, big Puerto star. Rico. You know, because even 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 Matias, ¿cómo se llama el uh, Subriel. Subriel. Even Subriel, even if he oh. becomes a champion, he's not going to be as big or popular as as Sandro Sayas or, or Berlanga are right now. Berlanga right now, he's headlining. Oh, he's he's doing a great job with You know, Berlanga is, pop, is, 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 is headlining. His popularity, all those guys, those big rappers and reggaetoneros behind him and supporting him, he's very popular. And, and they're using that to headline. And yes, Top Rank is smart when it comes to, to that. But... But uh, I think I think Sandra Sayas is is going to be Puerto Rico's next big name, big star. Even even if he doesn't become champion, as you know, that soon because he still has a lot to go. I'm not saying he's ready for a title fight, but uh, you know, Matias could become a champion. But that doesn't mean he's going to be Sanders bigger. on his way to being a superstar. And he's and he's looking good, better and better every time they. He's got a great every time he's fighting. You know, he's learning. He's getting better. Uh, his his uh, his trainer, uh, este, uh, Javier Centeno. Centeno, Javier is with an L. <laughs> we came we to the locker room. We talked today. about him when he when. Uh, it's funny. Talked, yeah, we talked about him when uh, he trains. Um, what's his name? Vito Fimo Lopez. Yeah, yeah, Cambosos. Yeah, he trains Cambosos, and we talked about it a little, bit, a little bit. And he came to the locker room when uh, the when Jose, I heard Jose Ramirez's card, and he told yeah. us, "Hey, thank you guys. I saw you know you got good. You guys said a lot of good stuff." And you told him your name is Javier, right? Not Javier. He says, "I think he says it was supposed to be Javier." He's like, "They just mixed up on the letter." And you and you started laughing. You said your your dad probably told the doctor he just wanted to be he wanted to put Javier and with that Puerto Rican accent, and then the doctor just fucking put an L, and he's like, "Yeah, I think yeah. that's what happened." Uh, but yeah, yeah he, 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 he has a lot of he has a lot of, he has a good a good stable right now. So that's you know that's someone to uh, that's good for them, and they're doing really good. Uh, Peter Khan is is is, is giving them the fighters yeah, like awesome. that. So that's great. You know, it's a great team, and and Sanders I think he's on his way. You know, the the right way, the way they're doing it. Top rank, Bruce and Brad are, are great at, at what they do. So they they're turning this kid into a into into Puerto Rico's next next star. I think I think he he will be. Uh, Puerto Rico's next star. I think he's looking really good, and 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 not only that, he's a great kid too. Great kid. Then we go to the main event. Edgar Berlanga coming off of his first decision. Um, he had gone what I think sixteen fights, sixteen first yeah. round knockouts. All knockouts in the first round. All knockouts in the first round. Um, and then he gets his first decision. Now he goes into this fight against Steve Rolls, and he's coming off of bicep injury as well. Um, he had gotten hurt in that in the in his previous fight. Goes in there against Steve Rolls, who is. Smaller weight class guy. They they moved him up in weight, but he's 37 years old. He has one loss. He got stopped by Triple G. Triple G didn't really have much problems with them. Stopped him in the fourth round, I believe. Um, Berlanga goes the distance with them, but I, I don't think that's the story um, because, like we said, Xander Sayas went eight rounds, but he looked good going eight rounds. There wasn't uh, too many like you could tell he's developing in those eight rounds. I think for Edgar Berlanga, he's actually going backwards. He's looked he, he hasn't looked as good. What, in, in his last, he didn't look as good in this fight, even as he did in the previous one. Previous one, he got dropped, but he, you could tell he was a little bit more busy. In this fight, he was just kind of walking around the ring, not really throwing a jab, not really doing much, just walking. Every now and then, he'll throw a, a, a power punch and not really land. He lost a lot of rounds. Um, he's, 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 uh, you know, he's getting to the, the big fights, main event, Madison Square Garden. So many people, I mean, he's so popular that it happens to a lot of young fighters, you know, where. Where uh, they get so popular, they they think they don't need to train as hard anymore. I'm not saying that's the case, but it, it's happened to a lot of a lot of fighters where where they're already becoming stars and everybody recognizing them and they're headlining. So they don't train as hard. We we said it about um, a few weeks ago, uh, Josh Taylor, you know, fighting his hometown, uh, being undisputed. Maybe maybe Camp wasn't as 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 good. Maybe he took it light. Maybe Berlanga's going through the same thing. But you know. I got so many calls and, and text messages and people telling me, uh, did you see Berlanga? He sucks. He, he's, he didn't look good, but you know, you know, he has power. The, the opponents early in his career were easier. So that's why he was looking sensational. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's not, you know, the, the next big star, but you know, until, it, until he lasts, 
I think top rank is also going to take advantage of it. And, take, and, and so is he. He's getting paid. I'm pretty sure he's getting paid a lot of money already. So if, if, if you're not that good and your team knows that you're not the They're best out money. there, then take advantage of it. And then, 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 then your, use your popularity to get paid. You know, you keep using all those rappers, all those reggaetoneros around you and all that. that that's getting you paid. So keep using it. Keep doing it. Why not? Yeah, him, he's similar to, uh, obviously, uh, I think on a bigger scale, but to the way you said uh, Blair the Flair Cobbs, where yeah. I don't think that the skill, I don't think the skill is there. I think we have to stop, um, uh, we have to stop listening to to the hype that he has around him and start looking at what he's doing in the ring. And I don't think it's there for, for Edgar Berlanga. Yeah. I don't think it was there for Blair Cobbs, but they were able to kind of, you know, build up a popularity enough to where they can make money off of off of the limited right. skill that, exactly. that they do have. And I think something that that that, that ESPN kept talking about that, that didn't help either was that he had Andre Rogier as his trainer, who was you know a a, a, a well known trainer and had world champs and stuff, world champs before already. But for this camp, they brought in Mickey Bay, they brought in Kay Coroma to help him out as well. And in the corner, it was it was his longtime trainer Andre Rogier. He had uh, Mike Basil. Obviously, had, there you have to have a cut man in there. And then he had uh, Kate Kuroma and his father. Again, they're allowing, they were, they were letting four people go up in the corner, which is something that's not even supposed to be allowed to happen. But they allowed four people to go up, and he's just getting advice, you know, and and getting instructions from different three different people. And you know, it, you need one guy to really be the main guy, and then the other people in the corner can give instructions, but they have to go off of what the main guy is saying. Um, if Andre Rogier is his head trainer, and he's the one that that comes up with the game plan and thinks this is the way we should fight. Um, he should be the one talking, and then the other guys just add stuff on, not you know, do this, do that, and then the other guy saying, "Oh no, you should do like it was just it just seemed like it was there was no real real game plan for 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 Edgar Berlanga going into the fight. Well, um, and that's that's part of what happens when when uh, when when you become a star and people are actually you know you know they make you feel like that. So everybody wants to be part of it. Everybody wants to wants to say, oh, did you guys hear me say that? And that's you know they want they want to see if. If something happens, something spectacular happens from what they said, you know, and, and they, they want to get credit. When you have three or four different people that all four want to be or jealous of the other one or jealous of the main one, they all want to say something to make them feel like it was me that told you, you know, and that's a problem. It's a big problem. Yeah, he needs to have one head trainer and the other guys be yes. guys that go piggyback off, off, the, off the head trainer. Okay. Um, but that did it for the actual fights that we had over the weekend. Um, earlier in the week, though, we had a big announcement from Showtime on their on their schedule, uh, multiple world title fights, multiple um, pay per view cards. We just had a, a, a you know a lot of fights coming up, and and it's a stacked schedule. Some fights, you know, we could we could do without. Um, but it starts this weekend, March twenty sixth, um, this Saturday. You have uh, Tim Zhu. I think I believe he's making his U.S. debut, uh, fighting against uh, Terrell Gaucher in a super super uh, welterweight. I, I believe Tim Zhu is ranked number one or, you know, he's a mandatory for, I think, the WBO title. So that, you know, that's a step up in competition for him. Um, the 154 title, obviously, is is uh, we're looking to get an undisputed champ, um, which Showtime released their, 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 their that fight. That fight was actually supposed to happen on Saturday. Um, Charlo had to pull out. Was it Charlo or, or Castaño? Charlo Castaño, injury. Castaño. Castaño got injured, yeah. Um, that was rescheduled. Um, then we go April 9th. April 9th, I, this is one of my favorite fights of the schedule. Erickson Lubin, the hammer fighting Sebastian Fundora in a WBC super welterweight interim uh, title fight. Early prediction for that fight, because that's a that's a that's a that's a good one. That's a yeah, I, I gotta go with Fundora, you know, his his height and, and reach, and you know, even though he fights in close, you know, he's just too difficult, man. He's too difficult for anybody. He's just too tall. And uh, and I gotta go with, with Fundora plus his local kid, you know, so we gotta support him. But uh, but it's not gonna be easy either. You know, he's never been against somebody with that experience and that talented. So it's gonna be an interesting fight. You know, uh, may, maybe not one. You know, Fundora is maybe not one of the, the 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 best styles out there that we actually look forward to watching him fight. But in this fight, I am looking forward to to this fight because it, it'll put if he wins, it'll put him you know up there to to, to fight for the world title and and he deserves it. He's a work, hard working kid. I'm thinking, I think Erickson Lubin, I think that, that that knockout loss that he had against Charlo was just something that was too early. And he's looked he's looked good his last his last few fights. Um, I'm picking Erickson Lubin in that one, but again, you know, really good fight. The week after that, we have April 16th, 
on a uh, on pay per view. Errol Spence Jr., the WBC and IBF champ, fighting Jordanis Ugas, the WBA welterweight champ, in a unification fight uh, from Cowboy Stadium in Dallas against Showtime pay per view. The undercard, the coming event, I believe, is is um, Pibble Cruz versus Yuriorkis Gamboa. You have Bandido Vargas versus Rayo Valenzuela. Jose, his name is Jose, right? Jose Rayo. Jose Rayo Valenzuela. Um, you have Josecito Lopez in that one uh, versus the, the guy. He's an undefeated guy. The, I know his last name is Crowley. From but Canada. He's, he's from yeah, Canada. Crowley, um, undefeated, uh, well to wait. Cody something, you know? Yeah, Cody Crowley, I, I believe. Yeah, so sounds, yeah. I think Josito opens up the card and then it goes that in, in order. But on the undercard, below that, like non 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 um non pay per view, you get two really really good fights. I read that Brandon Lee will be fighting Zachary Ochoa, who was with uh, oh, yeah. who was with Golden Boy. Golden um, Boy. He had that one knockout. I don't remember if you remember that he had that one knockout, like when like I don't know how many seconds of the fight he ran out and he knocked somebody out with the with the overhand right and put him to sleep with like. I don't know, a few seconds into the fight. Uh, so power puncher and Zachary Ochoa against against the knockout artist of, of Brandon Lee. And Stanio, uh, Stanionis versus um, Butaev, who Misael, that's the guy that Misael is sparring right now uh, for the, I, I don't know if it's the WBA regular title already. I think, I think it's the WBA regular title. So two two free fights on the card yeah. and then the, a, a, a good a good uh, pay-per-view card. So that one's, you know, that one's good. Uh, early prediction for the Errol Spence versus uh, Jordani Sugas fight? I, I think Errol Spence wins uh, by decision. That's that's my prediction. I think Errol Spence win, wins by decision. Uh, it's going to be a good card. You know, we're going to be there in Dallas. And uh, and hopefully, you know, obviously people will come out and support, you know, especially uh, Spence being from, from Dallas. But the rest of the guys, you know, uh, you know, Rayo, you know, who's making a name for himself and, and actually looking really good in his fights. Jose De Lopez, who is a veteran and also going to be in the card. I know the Mexican fans are also going to show their support. A few weeks after that, May 14th, I, I, I think this is the best part, that it's not on pay-per-view. Jermel, uh, Jermel, is it Jermel or Jermel? Yeah, Jermel Charlo versus Brian Castaño, the rematch um, for the undisputed title at 154 pounds. Again, it was supposed to be this past. Where's that fight gonna be? Uh, I don't know. I didn't read where. I didn't is read it LA. I didn't, I didn't read locations for any of the fights. I'm oh. guessing it's gonna come back to LA, uh, but I didn't read any oh. locations for any of the fights. I just know Errol and them are fighting in. Uh, in because uh, that's gonna be a good fight, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Castaño because May 14th. He, I think he won the first fight, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna stick like that. Which Charlo could come back with a different game plan and and fight smarter, different, or whatever, and win the fight. Uh, you know, I. Yeah. That could easily happen, it's but uh, but I'm yeah, but I, you know it's a 50 fifty fight. But I'm gonna go with Castaño. Yeah, I'm, I I've gone back and forth. I don't know who I don't know who to pick. The coming event for that one will be Jerron Ennis and the IBF title eliminator yeah. against Kusio Clayton. Jerron Ennis, one of one of the baddest yeah. dudes right now. Um, if he wins, he's mandatory for you know for for one of those welterweight titles. I think what's gonna happen is Errol Spence is gonna be Ugas decision, and he is gonna end up fighting Crawford. He's gonna fight Crawford later this year. He's gonna he's whoever wins that is gonna move up to 154 because Charlo's already kind of talking about moving up to 154 and they'll fight whoever's undisputed at 154. We'll have two undisputed champions fighting against each other at 154, and then it's gonna be the way it is at 140, a free for all for all the all the titles. Virgil, that's a great one. that's, that's uh, a great plan. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Jerron Ennis is gonna get another one. Connor Ben probably gets you know yeah. one of the, you know there's just great. a bunch of a bunch of guys. No, it's gonna be that great. One. It's gonna be great, great for all the younger ones, but it's also gonna be great for those guys, you know, because undisputed, and then you move up, find another undisputed. I think that's that, what that's, that's, that'll be great. It's a great Unless plan. Charlo, hopefully, hopefully it goes like that. Unless Charlo wins, because I, I don't know, and Errol wins, because I don't know if they're. Uh, I think those are those are the. I think those are the two that train together. So, you know, that's the only one that, that if they both win, then I obviously I don't think we see that. Right. Um, the next week we got David, David Benavidez, David, David Lemieux. This is one of those fights on the car, on the schedule that was kind of, you know, David, David Benavides is, should be past opponents like, like David Lemieux. But again, hopefully he wins and we get, you know, the Charlo fight or we get the, the, the um, Caleb Plant fight. after. Caleb Plant. Yeah. Cause that's not, you know, it's not up to David Benavides standards. May 28th. On pay per view again, another fight that isn't up to somebody's standards, but because it was canceled earlier in the year, 
they just owe it to Rollies. Uh, Javante Tank Davis versus Rolando. Remember, I, I, I think we think the same thing about the fight. It's one of those entertaining fights just because Rollies going to talk shit, even though he's not that good at talking shit because at the press conference, he kind of choked. And then Javante, you know, going to go in there, knock him out. But, you know, it's going to be entertaining for how long. No, but it's good. You know, and, and actually, I'm, you know, it's good for Rollies because – he, 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 he was supposed to get that that fight, big payday for himself. You know, he said, you know, he was planning on buying his mom a house and stuff like that. I think they owe it to him. They owe it. And plus, him. Him. he came out, you know, you know, with no, you know, everything was false. So yep. they, they owe it to him, you know, promoter, whatever it is, TV, whatever they have, they owe it to him. And I'm, I'm glad he's getting that fight. Yeah. He, I think as he gets beat, but I was gonna I'm say, glad I he's getting he the fight. He deserves it, but he lost to, he lost to, uh, um, Marines, so I don't know about yeah. deserves, but because of the allegations, well, because of that, think, that's he, why. They no, needed to give because because of what happened when he was supposed to fight in December. My favorite fight of the whole schedule, June fourth. The only the only thing I have to complain about this fight is that I believe I read <coughs> it's going to be in Minneapolis or some random place like that. Like I don't know what why this should have been at the StubHub Center. It's a June fourth. Imagine a summer fight at the StubHub Center. With the local kid Danny Roman fighting against Stephen Fulton Jr. for the WBC right. Super Bantamweight World Title fight, I I can't wait. Danny Roman, I've said it multiple times. One of my favorite top three, top five of my favorite current fighters right now. But Stephen Fulton has is yeah. getting like he's one of those guys that in in a few fights he's going to be one of the top pound for pound fighters, especially if he he's able to beat someone like Danny Roman. Um, it's be a great early, fight. Early, early I'm going for, for, for Roman. I'm going for yeah, Roman. He's he's not, breaking down with body shots, uppercuts. I, I like it. But Fulton's legit, man. I can't yeah. wait for that it's one. Good fight. one. But then we end we end the schedule with two. Uh, Jamal Charlo, the uh, WBC middleweight champ versus Suleki. Um, again, guys that are below. Uh, Don't care much. Charlo's, yeah, these below Charlo's level shouldn't be in the ring with them. July 9th, just because it's, it's Ray Vargas and he's just, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't seem to want to watch i've never wanted to watch a ray vargas fight uh but mark maxayo coming off of the 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 uh, upset win over gary russell so he gets a main event slot july 9th against ray vargas defending his title and uh, that does it for the for the uh showtime schedule again a really good schedule there's three cards there's some really good ones that i want to watch there's some that i don't care much about either yeah, some that i won't be watching yeah but they um they have Undercard bouts too that that I I I read Steven Espinosa said they're gonna give more details on undercard because they do have like I said they have guys like Brandon Lee and Jerron Ennis that are potential you know future stars you got the fight of Stanionis versus versus um, Butaev which is gonna is a fight of the year kind of potential potential fight on the undercard of Errol Spence so there's gonna be a lot more stuff obviously getting announced locations like you were asking so you know we'll keep you guys up to detail um with with stuff like that. But that does it for this. Unless I'm forgetting that was something that we were going to talk about that I mentioned before. No, I don't know. No, I think that, I think I think that's it. Um, that does it for this week's this week's episode. Um, oh, this weekend though, March 26th, we said uh, Showtime has Showtime has uh, Showtime has uh, Tim Zoo versus uh, Tarogo Shea. But we also have on the uh, Berchel Berchel fights in Las Vegas this this weekend. We have Arturo Cárdenas from Saguayo, Michoacán, fighting on the top rank card. Um, so you guys tune in to that. I believe the card will be on ESPN+. Plus. ESPN+. Plus. So make sure you guys tune in, watch the fights early. Again, we will have we will have somebody on You know, he's card. Arturo Cárdenas, but, you know, oh, Arturo Popoca. Name, Arturo Popoca, but he doesn't go, he doesn't use that name, he, he uses Cárdenas. So they might introduce him as Popoca, but, but he's, you know, that's him. That's him. You guys see from Saguayo, Michoacán, Michoacán, you know, that kid is talented and, uh, you know, I, I, you know, we, myself, personally, I expect a lot, a lot from this kid. He, he can fight. He's a, he's a real deal. This Saturday on ESPN Plus. Yeah. So make sure you guys tune in this Saturday. Two good cards. Uh, Showtime and ESPN. Uh, does the zone have something this weekend? I'm not sure. I'm not that I can think of the top of my head. I should not sure. <laughs> um, again, that does it for this week's episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we will see you guys next week.